So welcome back. Um, okay, so we all know oscilloscopes only measure volts, right? They don't measure amps. They don't measure resistance or anything else. They just measure volts. Well, no. Um, there is a very nice little trick that you can get your scope to not only measure in the vertical resolution uh, in terms of amps through a device, but you can also, you see down here, you can also have it labeled as amps so you know exactly what it is. And you look at your scope directly, and yes, that's in amps. So we're going to give you a little trick here to show you how to do it. Uh, I'm going to use a Rigel DS1054Z. Uh, It'll probably work almost identically on uh, other scope. Okay, so the first thing I recommend, even if you're not interested in doing um, direct reading of amps or current on your oscilloscope, if you do any testing or electronics, um, fiddling around with electronics and electrical stuff, I suggest you go out and get something like this. And this is a half ohm 100 watt resistor. Very, very useful in many situations. Um, now, just be careful. 100 watts doesn't mean you can just load it up to 100 watts on your bench. Uh, I'm going to have another video where we talk about thermals and some of the limitations, but um, I suggest you go out and get something like this and also a number of these terminal blocks. Very, very useful. Uh, you can screw in your um, different circuits and you can measure with your scope and it's very, very useful. Hook up to your power supply, whatever. So what we're going to do is we are going to measure the current through this resistor and it's going to read directly in current on this scope. And I'm going to inject current from this power supply, DC, 1 amps, coming out here, going through the resistor. Now keep in mind, this could be any circuit. It could be 25 components and all you're doing is inserting this resistor in the circuit so that you can measure current at that particular point in the circuit. Okay, so right now I am, I've got the power supply off, I'm reading zero, and I'm going to turn this on and it's going to go immediately to constant current mode and push one amp. So there you go, one amp is pushing out here through the resistor. Now if you look over here on the scope, you can see down here it says one amp. And you can see it's one division, which is one amp. So I am reading directly one amp on my scope. Now you may say, wait a minute, scopes only read volts. Well, you can configure it so that it will automatically read in terms of amps and give you the right values. Now, how do you do that? Well, of course, you could just take the voltage, divide by this half ohm, or effectively double the voltage and that will give you the amps, right? Because if it's, say, uh, one volt over half an ohm, it's two amps, right? So, but the, you can have the scope do that for you. The way you do that, I'm going to go into the probe menu and you can see down here on the probe, normally your probe is going to be 1x or, or 10x. Um, here I've got a 10x probe, but you can see it's set at 20x. The reason we do that is because it will now read uh, a value that is twice what it's measuring. Okay. Now you may have wondered in this probe list why you've got so many different options for how many times you're going to multiply your reading. It goes from 0.01 all the way up to 1,000. Um, so if it's normally going to be 10x, then if you hit 20x, it will double it. And you want it to double because you've got a half ohm resistor. So one over a half is two. So if this is in fact a half ohm resistor, and you can check that, you can measure it with your multimeter, make sure it's actually a half ohm. If you're going to use that, anytime you insert this into a circuit, if you put your probe at 20x, if it's normally 10x, you put it at 20x, you will read directly a value uh, proportional to your amps. Now, you can also set the unit to amps just for visibility, right? If you go down here to units, you can see you can have watts, amps, volts. So what I did is I just spun the dial 
selected amps, and now all the readings will put an A after it, okay? So basically that's all you do. You get a known resistor of very low value that you can insert in the circuit, measure across it, make sure you've got your probe settings set to twice what they normally be, and you should be good to go. So anyway, hope that helps. Take care and have a really good day.